Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, we are going to be talking about the throw ratio of a projector. It is a decision making of a setting for a projector. Because when you look at a TV, you look at its size and the resolution and the OLED QLED, some sort of a technology that it has. And later on, you look for us, it has a subwoofer or whatnot and the smart functions, casting and stuff like that. But you first look at the screen size for the TV and the brightness and OLED and QLED stuff. Basically, things are similar in the projector, but you have to know a lot more than a TV or look out for in advance because it's not the same as a TV. It's not a single size. TV is a fixed size, so it's like an automatic car. You don't have to drive it like a manual car, know everything that you're doing. But in the projector world, you need to know your decision because if you don't know, you end up with a bad result or bad visual. The thing that you imagine might not happen in your room. So in the beginning, you see a 4K ultra short throw laser projector and a regular throw projector. We're going to be talking about throw ratio in this video. And I made a detailed uh, videos, tutorials in the channel, the friendly conversation before buying a projector. If this is the first video, go back and try to understand before buying a projector what you should be look out for in general and if you're into the ultra short throw area which i'm not going to talk too much about but mention a little bit ultra short throw projector tutorial is in the channel you can watch it so you can learn ultra short throw why you should be choosing or when to not to choose ultra short throw so you get the cons and pros and stuff Basically, throw ratio is uh, the thing that you have to place your projector to the screen. If you have a shorter throw projector and if you have some sort of image size in your head, let's just say 100, for the 100 inch, we need to be placing something like this for this projector model, which is probably around 1.6, 1.7 meters. It's a good throw ratio. This is a wide, uh, this is a wide angle, kind of like a wide angle projector, not too sh uh, long throw projector. But you can have a shorter throw projector and you can create the same image from right here. One, 1.2 meter from right here. So they called short throw projectors. And this is the ultra short throw where you can really touch the screen with your projector or just put it in front of the wall and you're done. So these are expensive. Short throws are less expensive than the ultra short throw and regular throw are less expensive and long throw projectors are less, even less expensive. There is a reason that projectors are expensive when you wanna buy them, like the TVs. Optical quality is important. Throwing the image from shorter distance like this ultra short throw does is expensive because you have to have a, a wide angle lens that can really focus all the corners in a correct way, create a good sharp image from a very short distance. So you need a, like a fisheye lens, but without a distortion for the camera world if you're into photography. So these are why ultra short throws are quite expensive. They triple or quadruple the price of a regular throw projectors. Between these two short throw projectors that I love, they tend to create one 1.2 meter, 100 inch. They are expensive maybe two times than the regular throw projectors, but they are closer to the screen or the wall. And the longer throw has a <laughs> huge amount of uh, distance, need, to create the same image size. So this is the distance. But what about the other advantages of throwing ratio? By the way, in the second part of this video, you're going to see the screen capture and we're going to calculate from a web, from couple of websites, the screen size that we can achieve, how much distance that we need for that projector, especially if you're looking out for a projector, how to learn the screen size that you can achieve in your setup. I will definitely teach that. So the second part is also important. Don't skip anything. Try to understand the subject 
because you're going to purchase. The second thing is the light. I'm going to be showing this. This is the light, as you can see, it's pretty bright. This is huge, hugely bright room. Right now, if I put it like my face level, roughly 400 lux of power, where I can shoot 4K detail close-up shots. I create my watch high-res channel, my hobby channel, I love watches, watch review in these lights. So these are quite bright and you're seeing me in a very good way. Let me just close the lights and show you the screen. So this is still lit room by the projector and screen and also the corridor light is open. So I can really see my hands, what I'm doing. If I eat anything, I can really decide what I eat. The light measurement is important. Where I am here, close to the projector, let me just hit the white spots. This is 4,000 lux from one hand of a space, like 20 centimeters, 25. This is 300 lux. 4,000, 300. More than 10 times of light difference. So that's why getting close is important. If you get close, you project very bright image. That's why ultra short throw projectors are expensive and there is a reason for that so if you see something like this 2000 lumens of projector it's expensive than the 4000 ansi lumen that let's just consider the lumen declarations or ansi lumen declarations are proper and everything uh, like exactly they say not a uh, commercialized if you put one to another why the less powerful projector is expensive because it has a wider lens or a zoom lens or shift lens shifting capabilities that's why let's just show it in the real time look at the brightness it will be maybe overexposed for the camera but just for demonstration purposes if i get close you see how much the brightness difference is so getting close is important but my image size is decreasing i need to refocus of course again but i have the same settings, I will show you another thing, which is also including the throw ratio. This is a 190 to 100 range, 90, 95 inch space, this near size. Let me just zoom from the projector. I zoomed in, refocused it, and right now the image is 80, 85, 82, kind of. So the brightness is increased because I have a zoom lever. I have a lens that can zoom. So that's one of the important parts. If you purchase a projector with a fixed lens, you're going to purchase cheaper. But if you don't have the zoom capabilities, if you have fixed it on the ceiling or the back of the room, you will get only one size. But what if you prefer to use it with a TV, kind of like a satellite uh, image, like full HD satellite image? What you will get then? Getting smaller is something important. In this ultra short throw video, I showed it. I, I just, in this video, I projected 65, same image with the ultra short throw and the TV. You're see seeing the TV below and ultra short throw. When I close the lights, the between, uh, the difference between ultra short throw and the regular throw is obvious. Let's just see this. Do you see too much of a difference in the brightness in the dark room? So if you can, if you want a small image, smaller image without moving the projector, you need to have a, some sort of a zoom. Some of the projectors from Epson, like big models, have 1.6x zoom. I remember this is 1.2 or 1.3. This is a 20, 30 percent of zoom. What if you, what if you have 60? What if you have 2x zoom? Then you can wide and get small in the same place and create brighter image or larger but not brighter image so that's the choice that you have but if you don't have that choice you'll pay less so if it's in your budget you need to think about this one other thing is the distance that you have you might not be having the same space that i got i have 4.5 meters in the small side of the room i have probably six meters and even more like seven meters in this side of the room so I can create with the same projector probably 250 inch of image from here, 
but I can only create 140 image from this distance. But what if you have a smaller room with a 2.5, 2.6, small kid room, but you still want to have 100 inch of image, then you might want to consider short throw or ultra short throw. That's what it is. But getting, having the ability to see the throw ratio, understanding the throw ratio is important. One of the reasons that you need to be looking out for is the minimal focal distance. That's not including in the throwing ratio part, but if you, if you can get some sort of a distance and then after you go a little bit, you cannot focus. That's the minimal focus of your projector. Not every projector can touch the screen. Xiaomi does, but some of the absence models that I like, even they are ultra short throw, they cannot focus. Some of the Optima models, they cannot touch the wall, they cannot touch the screen like this Xiaomi. This is one of the reasons that I purchased this one. I can make a 65 inch TV size image with this. And if I pull it out, I can create 125, 150 inch 4K image. That's why it is important to know in advance how much size you can create in how much distance. The one other thing is with the optical zoom, you don't lose that much of a light. So that's also an important issue. If you have, if you are here, then you have the light, right? And if you get close, you have more right, uh, light because if you, you have a wider lens, you might have a wider lens if you have a shorter throw projector. But if you have a zoom, you can create a similar light level, not exactly the same because you're not moving the projector. And the optical quality is important in this because not every optical element is a fixed diaphragm volume. Many of the projector with zooms, they tend to have some sort of a light loss in the zoom range. Many of the cameras tend to lose when you zoom in. So that's normal, but you don't lose the light amount that you physically go back and forth. That's why some of the uh, Epson models that I, I like, maybe in the future I will purchase and test them too, like the cinema big models, they tend to have big cases, lens shift settings because you can move the screen right or left without moving the projector, that's a plus, or up and down, keeping it in the same level, or you have a 1.6 or 2x zoom, even though you have a wider uh, lens to throw a big image, and this is a great thing to have. Don't forget about this. Having a zoom is important. Having wider lens is important. Going short throw is important. Before we go into the second part of this video, like I teach you and basically show you with different models, projector models, and searching for your model as an example from different websites and calculate the distance that you have and seeing the screen size in the screen capture region, you'll understand in total the subject. But before we get into that, the most important part is choosing the throw ratio because of the placement reason. Placement is, an all, of course, another issue because if you have a long throw projector, you can place it at the way back, but you need to cable it. You have a regular or long throw, you have to place maybe under the ceiling. So you have to cable it like the HDMI for your Xbox, HDMI for your Apple TV, or many kind of inputs that you have, or the power cable that you need to put it on the top of the ceiling. So the placement will be expensive. Don't forget about this. If you calculate the placement and the handwork that you have to do, you might want to choose a shorter throw or ultra short throw to not to spend the money onto the work that you have to do, spend the money on the projector itself, maybe buy a second hand. That's up to you. One other thing is you're seeing something awful here. This is in the center of the room, a little table, and this is the electric cable. So it's not looking good or cool. So if you're going to place it there and leave it there, just like this projector that I have, then you need to be doing some sort of a cabling because it will be looking awful for a living room. So if you're going to use it in the living room, even though the shorter throw projectors, like short throw projectors, let's just say if I put it in a one meter to create a 100 inch, one, one, 1 1.2 meters, then I need to place it right one meter in front of the wall and I need to cable it. 
if I put it on the ceiling, it might not be a problem. But if I want to uh, place it on something and then project it to the wall, then I need to do the cabling according to that. So if you can't hide the cables, shorter throw projectors might not be good for you. You have to go maybe cheaper long throw projectors with much less light maybe. So one last thing is the price you pay is gets you what you paid for. You cannot get more than what you paid for most of the time. If there's a certain amount of bargain, extra discount, it might happen. But many of the time, if you give up from the money that you pay in advance, like the TVs, you lose the technology, you lose the image quality. Most importantly, you lose the brightness of your projector and the lens focus, zoom, or the wide angle lens of your projector. Don't forget about all this and keep these in mind. And we're going to be looking out in the screen capture for the rest of the video. Welcome to the screen capture part of the video. And before the educational part, don't forget to subscribe and tune to the channel. It's important for me. And please do comment because comments makes videos more appealing to the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget about this. Creating different videos and tutorials for me is fun and it's also difficult to uh, create a late at night after the ki my kids is in the sleep so let's start start with the website i will share a couple of the website links at the description below of this video don't worry about this but first projector that we have will be epson eb uh, 2255u uh, this is 5000 lumens and 15 to 1 contrast ratio by the way this website shows a lot of stuff let's just go below and see how this works by the way you can lock the throw distance or the image size move back and forth what you can do this is a detailed calculation so at the bottom part where, where you can also search for any kind of projector i will show it to you uh, basically, if I find the projector, I definitely check out this website before purchase any projector. Let's just see the zoom. This model is a 5000 uh, lumens of power and it's a powerful projector. It has one, 1 1.3 and at the max 1.6x wide angle lens. So this is the telephoto regular throw. This is the widest throw of this projector. But let's just see. Even the widest and I will, by the way, I can change the unit for the screen size. I will choose inches, image size. The distance, I will go for the centimeters. So for the one meter, let's just go for the 100 inch of image. And this is 100 inch diagonal. And I need to have 3.3 meters, 3.39 meters for this projector for the widest angle. For the telephoto, I need to go 5.57, five and a half meters. So let's just go to the Epson TW650, which is the model that I showed you in this video. Again, I'm checking the units. I'm making the inch. For the 100 inch, let's just go to the 100 inch. I need to be 2.47. For the other model, I need to be 3.3, .3, which means I need to go 80 centimeters more, near one meter more for this projector. It could be looking a small for your room setup, but if you have a small room, 80 centimeters, it, it is a quite a bit of distance for achieving the same amount. And one other thing, if I'm close to 80 centimeters, light will be pretty much by the way i forgot the wide angle sorry let's just go for wide angle uh, we didn't change that it started in the middle in the widest angle 2.2 meters go back 3.39 1.2 meters of distance this is a huge distance difference that's why w TW650 is one of my favorites and one of the most practical projectors out there. The new model is probably TW750, but this is also quite good projector. This is 3,100 lumens. This is 5,000 lumens. 
but I need to go another meter and 20 centimeter, 120 centimeter. That will decrease the amount of light that I can project from this projector. It might be still more bright, but don't forget, it will not be huge because we lost a lot on the way. So don't forget about this. This is why some of the longer throw projectors, uh, they, Optoma has some models, BenQ, and VivSonic and Acer, especially in the cheap models, they tend to declare 4,000, 5,000 lumens of light. But if you go too much of a distance, you lose the light. So that's not the meaning of the light. It's not the single point that we need to be looking out for. Let's just see 135 inch image size that I have in my setup. In the widest angle, I need 4.57. 4.5 or 4.6 meters for longer throwing EB 2255U. For the Epson that I got, it's very easy. 135 inch is 3 meters. It can create in 3 meters. This can create in 4.5, 1.5 plus meters. So let's just go short throw, which is one of the favorite projectors that I love and probably i will purchase sometime hopefully this is from optoma it's an old model discontinued model but you can find the new generation gt 180 derby projector when you first look at it in the website you see the specs like 10 bits the contrast ratio and stuff you have to go to calculate the throw ratio just like the highlights if you search it from the google with the projector central you can achieve your projector maybe easier than searching inside this uh, website. It doesn't matter. Let's just take a look at 100 inch of image and how it affects 1.1 meter and it can create a 100 inch of image. Let's just see 135 inch, the screen that I have, 1.5 meters right in the middle of the room, maybe even a lot closer. So I can place this projector, let's just say, close to the wall, okay? And I can take it out one meter with a small table and create from one meter, let's just see what it does. Let's just one meter. It's creating 92 inches. This is crazy. That's why this projector is expensive, but it's worth the money that you spend. So don't forget about this. Let's just go back. To one other thing, we need to be looking out for this projector. It doesn't have a zoom. That's one of the things that many of the short throw projectors pass out. So they are expensive, but they are using expensive wide angle lenses. So you can't zoom in and out. So you need to move the projector or having it fixed. Don't forget about this. So if you need to change the size with the zoom, if you're planning to use the projector on the ceiling, then uh, TW650 style with the zoom will be much better. Let's just take a look at this. Three meters, two meters. If I lock, by the way, the throw distance, let's just say we have three meters. This is one of the best things of this website. I'm locking it in the, let's just say, 3 meter. I'm locking at the 3 meter distance and I'm changing the zoom of the lens. The image size is here, 133, 110. This is the placement, what it gets me, where it gets me. So this is one of the most important part. Like if you stop the image size, fix it and change the zoom, then you see the distance. That's how easy to calculate in this website. If What if you don't find your projector in this website? Then you need to look out for reviews or the throwing distance, what they declare in their website. One other thing in this video I'd like to mention, let's allow this, to show you a small short throw, like Optoma had LED short throw projector. Let's just go up top. This is an LED hand size projector, literally a palm of 
uh, palm size of a projector with a short throw lens. It's not cheap. The model is ML1050 ST+. Plus. So you might want to check out if you're into a LED, less powerful, but a small, compact and travel, little bit of travel option, then you can really look out short throw projectors in that region as well. So the screen size calculator, it's another topic, but I'd like to mention it anyway, since you learn how you can measure the throw ratio and screen size in one settings. The one important setting is throwing ratio understanding. Like some of the old projectors tend to have 10 to 9, uh, 16 to 9, uh, instead of 16 to 9, the cinema ratio, they tend to have like 16 to 10, or they tend to have like 21 to 9 ratio, uh, anamorphic ratio style. So 21 to, uh, 21 to 9, as you can see, UWQHD, it also says the resolution is not the same for the 4K here, uh, 16 to 9 that people are used to with the TVs. So you have to know your projector setting too when you're looking in the second hand market. And also let's just go diagonal. Uh, TVs are declarated in diagonal. Let's just say 75 inch screen diagonal calculated. What's the width? What's the height for the centimeter and the inch? This is one of the things that you'll need to be looking out for. If you're going to have a fixed screen on the wall, if you buy a screen, cut it off, like I did my, in, in my tutorials, fix it on a wall. So you need to know the height and the width of the screen, and you need to know the placement maybe calculate the height or also if you look out for 100 inch you need to check the size and you need to check your wall in your house that is your wall is capable like the you might have a wardrobe you might have a kid's place uh, or a painting on the wall you need to consider all this so screen size calculator will also help the uh, website will be in the description and there is another topic the TV monitor viewing distance calculator. I will be look out in this topic a lot more. Some of the things that don't apply for me, like I can watch with a shorter, uh, like sitting in front seat of a, a cinema sometimes in my home setup, but I'm quite happy with the big screen. But you can also calculate the screen size and the resolution and the distance that you might wanna uh, look out for. For example, 75 inch, uh, with uh, let's just say to 2000 yeah 160 update the data and for the 4k 75 inch tv minimum distance is one point let's just say 1.2 meters maximum distance is uh, 3.2 and visual a suity distance is 1.5. For me, 1.5 or 7 will be giving me cinematic experience from 75 inch. But if I go 3 meters, I can watch TV. Even 4, 4.5 will be good if you are in a small TV. Yeah, if your eyes in uh, just used to use small TVs like 55 with a distance. So that's another topic, whole another topic. I will not take your time. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Don't forget these information to gather them and share them with you. It takes time and also need you need to have an experience for this. And I will love to see your likes and comments in any of the videos. Hope to see you in the next video. Home Cinema and Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.